Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Can we bow down our heads as we pray? Our Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you that, Lord our God, you allowed us to be part of what you're doing. Thank you, Lord God, that by your mercy, you have found each and every one of us. You have drawn us, Lord, to the, these big projects that you have for the whole world. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you saw it fit that we be part. It's a privilege. Thank you, Lord, our God, that even this year, as you are pouring your heart, you decided that we are here to hear. We thank you for each and every one of us, young people, students that are connecting from all over. Father, we thank you. We want to pray that as we look at your word this morning for our prayers, we want to pray that you will show us mercy in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Yes, we are grateful to God. Uh, it's frightening. Uh, also to take a stand and to bring an input into this meeting because the way God has been uh, challenging us, the way God has been dealing with us is so amazing. Uh, I hope everyone knows that God is meaning a serious business. So it's a, it's a, it's a very, very awesome moment before the Lord. As we take this devotional challenge, we want to read a few scriptures. The first scripture we want to read, we want to read from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll read a couple of verses, 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 7. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We want to look at the necessary focus for the replacement sons and daughters. What is it that we need to focus onto as God is recruiting us, as God is calling us to take the baiting from our elders? I felt when I was praying about it, there are issues that we need to focus on. They are even hindrances and distractions that we may need to avoid. But let's read that 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 reads, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in a warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. I want to take this verse again. We, I think we will focus on it. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Verse 5. 
And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you standing in all things. I think it's also my prayer that verse 7, as we, uh, as we are following uh, this morning, may the Lord give us understanding. Now, I wanted to start noting that verse 4. Verse 4 says, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. You know, the matter that God has come to announce to us I saw in my heart as a serious matter. I saw it as a matter that can never be engaged half-heartedly. I saw a matter that requires a particular focus of heart. I saw when I read this verse, I saw that actually there are so many things as well that entangles us as young people. There are so many challenges, so many appealing things. Uh, if you look at the heart of a young person, a young person, if the heart of the young person is not tamed by God, is actually challenged by many things. It is actually desiring many things. And he actually uh, wants to explore many things. But when I looked at the task ahead of us, I saw, if you look at the life of David briefly, you know that David was a man of focus, much as was handing over now to his son Solomon, but David was a man of a single focus. David was a man who knew uh, his role. He knew his purpose on this earth, and he served God with such a heart. But then now, when it comes to his son, Solomon, it was so much shocking for me when we concluded yesterday, when our brother was reading that verse 7 on the uh, evening message of uh, that uh, 1 Corinthians 28. I think the verse 7 was very new to me. All along, I thought uh, Solomon was given... And the throne because he was born of David. I didn't. I never saw it so deep that even God had a claim over the life of Solomon. He said uh, that I will be his father and he will be my son. I noticed that as also Brother Billy was helping us to understand last night. Actually, nobody can do this unless. He is born of the father first, unless he is the son of God. So it will never. But then I looked at the life of Solomon again, as God has already earmarked him for himself. I also looked at the life of Solomon, maybe we'll read later, uh, when he was, uh, uh, when God visited him on 1 Kings chapter 3. Of course, we will soon read there. But what I'm trying to note here is that the task is not for the scattered people. The replacement sons and daughters that God is recruiting, he is looking for men, young men, and young women of focus. He is looking at people that actually are ready to put aside every other thing for this noble task. Actually, it's a noble task. Uh, if you look at those who are before us, if you look at those who are even in the scriptures, if you look even those who are before us, our elders, you don't think twice when you want to think what are they living for. They are leading a very, very focused life. So it will never be different even for us. If we want to take the baton, 
if we want to actually to be enlisted by God, then it is required that we must not get entangled by the affairs of this life. It's very common knowledge that to us as young people, there are so many things that are coming. One of the entanglements uh, that even the book of Hebrews chapter 12 talk about is an entanglement of sin. I'm happy when God was uh, uh, trying to, 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 to emphasize the matter of sin even last night because it, that is one of the dangerous entanglements that is one uh, hindrance, hindrance that actually cut us short to the purpose of God. But besides sin, there are so many other things that are appealing to a heart of a young person. There are so many things that actually consume the space in the heart of a young person, which we are praying that God will help us as we are praying this morning. I'm also happy that God has promised us to take us through the matter of knowing him. You know, even the matter of knowing God, you have to put things aside for that process to happen. You have to be deliberate. You cannot know just God just by listening to people. It's a deliberate action that one must engage to actually know God. God is going to help us uh, in. Now, one of the entanglements that I thought uh, I may read uh, and warn ourselves, we'll read from the book of 1 John chapter 2. I looked at that 1 John chapter 2. I saw one entanglement that can actually weigh us down as young people. That can actually disqualify us uh, to this noble task. First John chapter 2, if you read for, from verse 14, I normally read this scripture, separate uh, the above verses and start from 15. But when I was looking at it, the verse 14 of second, uh, First John chapter 2, the verse 14 was actually uh, addressing young men, addressing young people. So it made uh, so relevant the, the things that God is raising in, in, chapter, in verse 15. Uh, I, I think if you can help us to flash uh, that we read from verse 14. I have written to you, fathers, because we have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Maybe before we even pass here, uh, we are just noting that the victory of the young man is as a result of the word of God in his or in her heart. The victory of a young person is not on, or, or, on his or her natural strength, but the victory of a young person is in the word of God. How much of the word of God have you consumed in your heart? That will determine your victory. You'll remember also David said in Psalm 119 verse 11, he said, I've kept your word in my heart so that I, see, I may not sin against you. So we're noting that all oh, this victory for a young person it is because the word of God is inside. If we take verse 15, uh, there, is a, there is a warning in that verse 15 that says, uh, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. I know it's a broad, a broad matter, this one. We cannot have time to actually explore, but there's a warning to a young person. One of the things that actually uh, strangulates the life of Christ in the young man or in the young woman is the love of the world. If there is a sector of the society where the world is 
actually focusing when it's marketing the worldly things is young people. But we're noting here that immediately we are warned not to love the world. I, I just feel in my heart is very appropriate. You know, I just feel even uh, to, to talk to a high school uh, student to say, do not love the world. Because if we may think, no, they are still growing, they are young, they are growing the wrong way. The instruction of the word of God says, do not love the world. If you, you cannot love the world, and you, you still have the love of the Father at the same time. You cannot love God and the world at the same time. But I think at some point we will read this uh, from Living Bible, if the person who is uh, helping us to flash, if we will, find, we will get it also from Living Bible, I will appreciate it. But if we continue with King James says, Yes. All right. Just before we take living Bible, let me continue with King James. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world is passing away and the last of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Let me start from this verse 17, you know, before we read that living Bible. The issue about the world is that the, the things of the world will pass away. They do not remain forever. In my very, very small little experience, I've seen people, I've seen elderly people who spend their whole life pursuing the world. But now they are old. They are 70, they are 60, they are 80 years. They have spent all pursuing the world. But I found if those people did not get the uh, opportunity to know Christ, I found people with miserable lives. Why? Because this verse 17 says, and the world passed away, and the last thereof. It will never sustain, the love of the world will never sustain you. It's only the love of God, it's only the love of Christ that will sustain you, that will make you a gray-headed man, a gray-headed woman, but still gracious but still on your purpose. But those who pursued, also I want to note, they did not start to pursue the world or to love the world at old age. They planted the seed of loving the world while they were young, while they were in primary school, while they were in secondary school, while they were in, still in the universities. They actually, they, they knew no better thing to pursue but they pursued the world. Their, life, their lives are in misery. Whether you call it money, they spend all their strength pursuing for money, but now they come to a stage where they cannot even enjoy that money because the last of the world is not forever. It's for a certain period in your life that will actually get hold of you and you will not even have an ear to listen to God. I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, that is a cheat from the world. That thing will never last you. The only thing to pursue is God and pursuing God will actually give you a good ending. Let's read that first John now from the Living Bible. Stop loving this world and all that it offers you. Oh, brothers and sisters, the world offers a young person. The world will offer you even fashion, how to dress. The world will offer you even all the, 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 the beauty things that will actually make you like you are not living in this world. All those things are temporal. The world will offer you 
and so-called fun, enjoyment. But let me tell you, there's nothing that is coming free of charge. The enjoyment of the world is coming at a very high cost. It costs your life. I thank God I was also young when God called me. I was 20 years. I was doing my final year uh, at, the, at the teacher's college. I was 20 years and I was, you know, God was gracious to me. The speed at which I was running, chasing the world. But God intervened in my life. I really appreciate. I will forever be grateful to God. He came just early to, to, to rescue me from the chasing, from chasing after the wind, according to Solomon. Now, the world will offer you different things. The world will offer you false life. And that thing will never last. And if you are going to pay, I know many of us uh, as young people, we have paid about our virginity because we wanted enjoyment, because we were never content with whatever we have. We lost our virginity. We fell victims of many abortions because we wanted what we call in South Africa a soft life. Young people are so crazy to get soft life and they can sell anything for that. I pray that God will help us as young people, as God is recruiting us to actually replace our, 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 our elders. I pray that we will not replace them with one eye. Having a being by the world will come when we only have one eye. We are not fit for the task ahead of us. Let's look at verse 16. Uh, verse 16 says, For all these well, these evil desires, the craze for sex, the ambition to buy everything that appeals to you, and the pride that comes from, we from wealth and importance, are not from God. They are from this evil world. Oh, I cannot overemphasize the things that are listed here. I cannot over, ever overemphasize the craze for sex. If there is any uh, age group that is, that is so much crazy about sex, it is young people. But I want to pray that uh, as we, we follow God in this manner, in this Students' Congress, that I pray that... that God will win us. God will win us from the craze of sex. It's not normal. Everywhere, everywhere, when you see advertisement, sex is advertised on the devices. Everywhere, they, it's just a button away to corrupt your mind. On your device, it's just a button away. You are hooked on those pornographic materials, on those... You, if you are falling a victim of such, you cannot have a pure heart. You cannot have a focused heart for the noble task that God is calling us unto. I pray that God will actually win us. I pray that God will actually uproot the craze for sex, the ambition to buy everything that appeals to you. Young people, we are people who are following fashion. Well, people, one of the things that makes us to be uh, as young people, as victims, you know, I don't know in other parts of the world, uh, but where I am, young people, they fall victims of money. They fall into different scams. They, they want to get rich quicker. They want money because money affords them opportunity to buy anything that is appealing to them. I pray that God will help us. Ambition to buy everything that appeals to you and the pride that comes from the world. You know, that, that desire to buy everything, it actually makes you somebody. Oh, my brother, can I tell you that there's an identity in Christ? There's an identity that Christ can give you. You don't need to be identified by what you wear as a young person. 
You don't need to be identified. I know even the kind of clothes that we wear, even the kind of devices that we use. You know, we are, we are chasing after those things because we want to be identified. We are looking for, ident for an identity. But in Christ Jesus, you can find an, a, 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 an identity in Christ Jesus that will never cost. If you are given, you know, we are coming from homes. Some of us are, are depressed because the kind of life that your parents can afford is frustrating you because there is a deep desire to feed in your own life, a deep desire for worldly things. There is a, 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 a discontentment in your heart. You are longing, you are longing, you are longing. I've told you, I met 70-year-old people, grandfathers, grandmothers, I met them, and in their time, wow. But now, they have nothing to show. I warn you as a young person, as a young brother, as a young sister, don't allow yourself to be consumed by things that are temporal. Now, if you, if you flash again that verse 16 and 17 now, uh, and the pride that comes from the wealth and important, importance, these are not from God. They are from this evil world. You know, that version is also qualifying this world. It's not a kind world. It's an evil world. How glorious it can look now, but it's an evil world. And the inten intentions of the world are also evil. Let's look at finally at verse 17. And this world is fading away. Wow. My brother, my sister, the world is fading away. Do you know there are people who are actually captured even by their outward appearance? I mean, you are beautiful, you are young, you are a young man, you are a young lady, and you are obsessed about your beauty. Yes, we appreciate you now, you are beautiful, but do not let that beauty cause you to live the way of God. Because it may be your beauty and your obs obsession of, about your beauty that can take you away. You say, I, I get attention of everybody. When I get into the lecture hall, everybody is looking at me. And then you are obsessed. I want to tell you again, that beauty will not last forever. But there is an inner beauty, my sister. There is an inner beauty, my brother, that will last you forever. Even when your face would have had wrinkles. I've seen also, in my little experience, I've seen elderly people who who in their youthful years, they invested on inner beauty. That when you sit with this person, just uh, you, you just feel like sitting with this person, like sitting with this person, and you discover, ah, this person actually, uh, I, I, I hope I can bring this illustration. I got blessed a few, few days ago, a few weeks ago, I visited one old man. This old man, uh, was a young person and he was vibrant for the Lord. I enjoy sitting with this man every conversation. This man is thinking that he's learning from me because this man is a millet student. So he thinks he's learning from me and yet I'm learning more on his life. He's sharing a story to me uh, the other day. He was saying, Maybe that, that illustration is relevant even for, for what we are doing, because we are talking about uh, being focused, being set apart for the noble use. He was saying this other day he was working, and then he was frustrated by, uh, by his boss at work, so much persecuted until he lost it. Now, this Baba says uh, there was a strike in the working place, and then... He also joined the strike. So when people were actually mockering management, he also came because he, he wanted to revenge on this manager. He spoke and spoke and spoke. 
And then the strike finished. When he went back home, he was saying, immediately when I entered uh, my house, I knew there's a, there's a matter between me and God. I, I knew that I've quarreled, I've messed up. He said, immediately when I kneeled down to say, Father, God spoke to say, even you, so and so, with this mouth that is set apart to preach the gospel, were you able to do this and this and this? And this, your mouth, is set apart for my use? Or oh, the old man broke down and cried for, for forgiveness before God. You know, that thing touched my heart. Wow. It means God is even jealousy of my mouth. Oh, are you a young person? How do you handle your mouth? Do you speak anyhow? Don't you know that even that your mouth must be set apart for God? Because our saying, you can be beautiful, you can be energetic as a young man today, but there's coming a time where your beauty will fade away. But if you invested your own life uh, in God, even when you are old, there is a charm. There is an everlasting charm in your life. People will always enjoy your company because you invested your youthful years in, in God's business. Now, I want us to uh, look at another passage. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, we'll be able to read that first uh, Kings. Uh, maybe let's let's read First Kings quickly. My time is running fast. First Kings chapter three. Uh, we'll read from verse three. Uh, no, uh, from verse five. First Kings chapter three. We'll read verse five. We want to look at this Solomon. We want to look now at the life of Solomon. You know, when I read this, I said, Ah, this young man Solomon justified the choice of God over his life. The kind of, as I was looking at his life, the kind of maturity he actually uh, was displaying as a young man. I think in Gibeon, the Lord, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and God said, ask, what shall I give you? What a question. Ask, what shall I give you? At Gibeon, okay, what, uh, let's take the next verse. My time is finished. Um, and Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant, David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have is this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this today. Now, I want us to note here, you can hardly say this is a young man speaking like this. What I'm noting here, I'm noting maturity. A young person who was groomed, I want to believe there was a work in the background. Solomon did not come of maturity. What kind of a young person that is coming from the street and then is meeting God and is able to talk to God like this? I saw maturity. I said in my heart, oh, a can be matured. A young lady can be matured in his or her youth, can be matured and know how to talk to God. Do you see how Solomon spoke to God here with maturity? Let's also, let's jump, let's read now verse 7. Uh, verse 7, verse 7 says, And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made uh, your servant king instead of my father, David. But I'm a little child. I do not know how to go out or how to come in. Very interesting. The man is willing to be dead. He said, I'm a little child. He does not say, I grew from the palace. I know I'm here to correct my father's mistakes, but he's humble. I'm a little child. Wow. 
I want us to, uh, you know the story. I want us to read verse 10. If you flash verse 10, uh, maybe I will have to jump out of verse 10 says, the speech pleased the Lord and Solomon uh, that asked this thing. A young person can pray a prayer that is pleasing unto God. You are not young. Maybe you say, I'm only a teenager. You can pray a prayer that will please God. But if you look at the contents of the prayer, Solomon was not praying for, for, for the world. He was not praying for riches. He was not said they are distracting us. But he was praying for understanding. He was praying uh, to fulfill the purpose of God about his life. And that pleased God. He's given me a tongue of a disciple. He teaches me morning by morning. God can teach you morning by morning. Uh, what to say before God. God can guard your heart. God can also guard your heart so that your heart is not clouded by other things. God can give you a focused heart because the task that is ahead of us is a noble task. Finally, finally, to read Psalm 119, just two verses as we are praying. Psalm 119. Uh, we are praying. Uh, we are going to read verse 36 and verse 37. Psalm 19, verse 36 and verse 37, as we are concluding to pray. We are not, yes, this is another prayer from David. Verse 36 says, Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. You know, it's a very, very serious prayer that this man is praying. Incline my heart to um, incline my heart to your testimonies, not to covetousness. We have already said there are so many things that are appealing. You know, young people they can be so much covetous right from the young age. They are never content with anything. But we see here a prayer of a man that is praying to God, God, incline my heart to your testimony. Let me be looking for your testimony. Let me be looking for your statute. Let me be looking and, and, and thirsting after the, uh, the word of God than to be have a loose heart, a covetous heart, a heart that is chasing everything that is appealing. Let's look at verse uh, 37. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Young person, you can pray that prayer. There are so many worthless things out there that are appealing. They are worthless. They don't have eternal value. They will not, they will not uh, uh, keep you until you are old. They will not take you to eternity. They are worthless thing, things. I wish it can also be your prayer as we are praying, we are concluding to say, Lord, take my eyes away from worthless things. There are things to pursue as a young person other than all those things that are worthless. The worldly things, money, clothes to wear, uh, sex, all those things, they are worthless things. I'm not going to read it. If you look at that... Uh, uh, Second Timothy that we read. If you go down to verse 17, I think uh, you would notice that, oh, in a big house, there are vessels. There are different kinds of vessels. Some are vessels of honor. Some are vessels of dishonor. Uh, you know, I pray that God will help each and every one of us as a young person that you will decide in your heart that, I am going to be a vessel of honor. I am going to be, I'm going to be ready for my master's use, but it depends on how you page yourself on these things. What is your decision? You know, the commitments that we are making here, they should not be commitments to actually for the conference. They should be commitments 
it meant. If you purge yourself from these things, you will be a vessel of honor. Oh, what a wonderful thing to be a vessel of honor that you can be used by God at any time as a young person. Whether you are a professional, you are a vessel of honor. Whether you are a student, you are a vessel of honor because you have committed your life that, Lord, I am giving my life to you. I don't want to be distracted. I want to be, uh, to be pulled here and there by so many appealing things, by worthless things, but I want to commit my heart. Oh, I was also happy God is also bringing the discipleship here. It's very, because discipleship is what actually uh, prunes you. It's what actually trims you as a young person. It trims your appetite. It trims your everything. It sharpens you to become that tool in the hand of God. I want us to pray. Can you please bow down your head as we are praying? Just whisper a word of prayer to God. Are you willing to be set apart? Are you willing to be a vessel of honor? All what God is doing, he's actually recruiting vessels of honor. My brother, my sister, God has said he's looking for replacement sons, but there are standards. It's not just anyone who can come and be a replacement son, but the, the, the replacement sons and daughters are those who are willing, are those who are willing to say, I cannot do this. People like Daniel, people like Esther, those who said, I, I purpose in my heart to be kept aside for the master's use. Are you here? Can you commit yourself to say, Father, I give you my life. I want to be set apart. I want to be sanctified. I want to be sanctified for this noble job. Lord, please help my heart. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we thank you and we bless your name. We thank you, Father, because your eyes, your attention is unto us as young people. We pray, Lord our God, that you will find men and women, young men and young women in our midst that are willing to put aside everything for you. We pray that you will find Daniels. We pray that you will find Esther's in our midst that will set their lives apart for the master's use. Father, we pray that you will deliver us. You will uproot, Bossy, every love of the world in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Anything, Bossy, that replaces your word in our hearts, please remove it in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that, Lord, our God, we will actually, you will help us to pursue uh, things of eternal value. We will not be young people that are only pursuing money, that are only pursuing clothes, that are only pursuing enjoyment. Oh, Father, we pray that you will help us. You will turn our eyes away from where the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.